So I hate to do this to you guys, giving you this iPhone camera, but I didn't know I was going to be coming here. Headed into Nordstrom, they are having their like yearly half off sale where a lot of stuff's like 40% off. I guess not half off, but every half of the year they do a big sale. And I ordered some stuff online, but I want to get some shoes, but I want to try them on because I've had some bad experiences with getting shoes. And just because you're a 10 in one size does, or one shoe doesn't mean you're going to be a 10 in a different brand. So we're going to try on some different stuff and just see in general if they have any slick deals. Deals. So here's the pair that I'm looking at. These are the ones I'm wearing, which are the Desert tr Troopers, Clark's Desert Troopers. These are some uh, some Alan Edmund shoes, some wingtips, which are very cool. It's been my first kind of shoe, but very, very cool. These are on sale. So I ended up, I did get those, uh, those shoes. Really, really like them. Um, and now I'm in Macy's because I returned something and got some credit back here. So I'm looking to buy something with this credit because I can only use it here. Um, I also got shoe trees for those shoes. I've never had nice enough shoes where I've needed to buy something or to put a, a shoe tree in them. Basically, it's to kind of protect the shoe, keep its shape. But uh, now we're at Macy's going to find something to get to buy because I have to because I have a gift card. What are we going to get? So after walking around for about 20 minutes at Macy's, I realized there's nothing that I wanted. I almost got a polo, but then I had to pay money, like an extra $30. But I guess that's, that means the shirt would only be $30, but I'm just gonna get something online. When in doubt, go on the internet, because they have a lot more stuff. And you can use a gift card, yeah. Just in case anyone wanted to see them up close, very, very cool. I will rock the crap out of these bad boys. So, if you're watching this, it is Thursday evening for me. I'm leaving for the beach tomorrow. But I have to film a video for you guys. For today, for Monday, we actually forgot my knee sleeves. And uh, do I think you absolutely need, need knee sleeves? No. Do I absolutely love them? Yes. I always keep them right here. But now we're here for the gym. Got a little later start than I wanted to. For the uh, for my squat workout, now it's going to be a we'll call it a dynamic. Okay, we're going to call it a dynamic, but I'm not following the conjugate system exactly, so we're just going to call this a secondary day. So, what am I changing on my workout? So normally you guys see me do like sets of like two. What I'm thinking about doing is increasing the volume a little bit on my accessory days or my my secondary days. So what I might do is maybe sets of three to four, but I still keep it about six sets. And I'll also probably still do squats and does in the same day. Maybe, that was one of the things I didn't really like, as much as it's probably beneficial. I don't mind doing deadlifts after squats. I mind doing squats after deadlifts. I might try front squats because I want to see how my wrist mobility is ever since the injury. So we are getting closer and closer to move date. As of recording this, we are exactly two weeks out from moving. I move on June 4th, I'm moving up to the Arlington area, and a lot of y'all have made comments and uh, who live in like the Nova area and welcoming me. So I thank you guys a lot. Hopefully I run into a lot of you. We can all get some lifts in at the gym, whatever. You guys can show me the city, because that's one thing I'm gonna miss about Richmond is that I don't, you know, I know Richmond. I, I've been here for like five, six years living downtown, um, and I know the area very well but DC is a whole new world. A whole new world. <laughs> well, I'm very excited. I'm okay with like new areas. I'll be okay, I'll learn my way. The hardest thing about moving is gonna be going to a new Chipotle and knowing that they're gonna give me poor meat proportions because they don't know me yet. But I'm um, excited. If you guys have never lived in the city, I would highly recommend it. I love this city, it's not for everyone. There's traffic, there's some crime. <laughs> There's a lot of congestion. Uh, I mean, it's not for everyone, but I would highly recommend it, especially if you're in like your 20s, even you're going into your 20s. If you, if you have the opportunity, there's a city down here, down where you live, move downtown, you know? Get an apartment with some friends, enjoy the city, enjoy the nightlife, lots of cool things to do, always people doing stuff. Um, I love Richmond. If you ever want to move to Richmond, I'd recommend it. I can tell you the coolest places to go. But uh, excited for the next chapter, excited for the DC area, the Arlington, Clarendon area, and see what it has to offer. 
My goal is probably to stay there for about a year and then either continue living there or maybe go out west a little bit or a lot of it. So these are uh, honeysuckles. I don't know if you guys are familiar with these, but you can actually pull out the little center, killing it. Um, and then you have the stem and the, it's like a nectar on the bottom. It's like honey. Yeah, I don't know if it's actual honey, but it's not honey. But it's a sweet kind of nectar, and you can actually like eat these. Well, not eat them. You just like get all the flavor out of them. Pretty cool. So, put on my knee sleeves right now. And uh, Tim Rodriguez, if you're watching this, brother. In Texas, I kept accusing him of stealing my, my knee sleeves, and he's like, No, no, no. These are mine. These are mine. One of these is definitely his because A, mine have always been like this, other open, and so now one is completely like flat, okay? And one of them has the logo and one of them completely doesn't have the logo. So Tim has one of my knee sleeves and it bothers me so much because I can tell it's like a crease, it's like flat. This is my normal one, it's. He's a thief! So, we are working on 225 pounds, as you've seen right on the screen. And we'll do one of those live commentaries because it's the easiest for me and it gets a lot of that kind of in the moment thoughts. And I think a question that a lot of y'all might have in terms of this new program I'm doing is why, Max? Why would you do new programming if the programming you're on is working fantastical? And the reason is sometimes you gotta spread your wings. And when you've been lifting, I don't want to say as long as me because there's a lot of people out there been lifting way longer than me who are way smarter than me. So that's I'll always say that I never claim to be an expert. But once you, I don't think programs when you get on them are supposed to be the end all. You're not supposed to get on a program and do that forever. Like I said in my last video, you got to try what you like, what you don't like. But also, these programs are like templates, guys. Once you are on a program for X amount of time, maybe it's uh, six weeks, maybe it's six months, maybe it's a year, maybe it's a year and a half you will start to understand the program. You'll understand why certain movements are structured the way they are. You'll understand why certain uh, accessory movements are structured the way they are. So you, you, you start to learn. These programs are designed, I personally think, to help you learn. As Simon said in one of my comments, he's like, you know, teach, teach a max to fish. It's just like the saying, you know, give a man a fish, he'll eat for a day. Give a man a fishing pole, teach him how to fish, he'll eat for a lifetime, you know? So that's why it's important that if you do get a coach, you do get a program, is to talk to them about why certain movements are happening. So if you give someone a, a program, sure, they can follow for X amount of time, but if you're not telling them why they're doing what they're doing or you know, the purpose of these movements and how it's gonna help, then you're just literally giving them a fish for a day. You know, you're not teaching them how to fish, you're just giving them a program. So it's important if you ever get, do, do get on a program, do work with a coach, let them help you let them, yeah, help you understand why you're doing these certain things. And if they're just giving you a cookie cutter program, then they're probably not the best coach. Yeah. As we move into the heavier sets, working with 365 pounds, I think I might be going a little bit on the heavy side. So again, a lot of the times when you do your own programming, or even when you're following other programs, like it'll say a certain percentage, but you're allowed to alter a little bit. You don't want to make it easier for you if you can do the numbers, but sometimes, sometimes percentages based on how you're feeling just aren't going to happen that day. So you might need to lower, adjust it a little bit. If you start adjusting too much, then basically purpose of the programming or your percentages might just be too high in general. A lot of times on Gym Wonder 531 when I did that, um, I would have to reevaluate my maximum efforts, or my, my maximum lifts a lot because the percentages were too heavy for me. So sometimes you have to kind of readjust and start back over. That's what I really like about Gym Wonder 531 is you can start over at any time. But, um, dang it, what was I thinking? Oh yeah, so days of the week, doesn't matter. Now right now my schedule is Mondays will be a heavy lower day. Tuesday will be, right now, this week was Tuesday was a heavy upper day, Wednesday was off, Thursday is going to be a, uh, a, like an accessory lower body day, Friday will be like an active day where I was kind of go in and do some very, very light work, like mobility stuff, and Saturday will be another semi accessory day. So pretty much two heavy day trainings, two light day trainings, 
And but these don't have to be in that order. Uh, back in the day, I used to always do like chest on Mondays. You can do back on Mondays. Really, the day of the week is not going to change it up. What I'd recommend is always giving yourself at least one day in between squats and deadlifts. Always recommend that. Maybe even two days. So if you're doing deadlifts, wait at least one full day to two full days before doing squats. I'd really recommend that. I mean, even when I was doing chest by the one, I was doing regular programming. Um, never do it back to back. You can, and I'm sure a lot of people do, and I've done deadlifts and squats in the same day, but really if you want to get the maximum effort, my opinion is to give your body rest. Those are very taxing things. It's just like kind of going, usually you wouldn't go straight from like a, a chest day, really heavy chest day focused on chest, to a shoulder day right after. Like it's, that's just me personally. That's me personally, that's my opinion. Um, but the days of the week does not matter. It's whatever has the most amount of energy. I find Mondays to be the, like, Mondays when I want the heaviest lift of the week. Mondays and usually like Wednesdays, Tuesday or Wednesdays. So the first half of the week is when I want the heaviest lifts. Weekends for me personally are going to be my light days. I prefer that. I can't really do super heavy training on Saturdays, but at the new gym I might have to do that because of how the gym is kind of set up and how I have to travel and it might be busy. So will I change it up? We'll never know. But your, your days don't have to be set in stone, guys. So this next set, I'm actually going to do live on this new app called Periscope. It's like a live broadcasting set. So if you saw this, you can leave a comment down below. Um, it's pretty cool. It's my name, at Max Tuning. I do a lot of like Q and A's at nighttime, but I'm going to do a live set, 365 for a set of three. That means I can't do any music, but if you saw this live, leave a comment down below, and you guys got to follow me on Periscope, and I'll do a lot of Q and A's. Probably like maybe two or three times a week. I just kind of sit in my house and answer questions. It's pretty fun. Pretty cool. Okay, first of all, I want to say that high bar significantly harder to me than low bar. It's not like people can cool compare uh, conventional deadlift to, to uh, sumo deadlift, and I don't necessarily think one is easier than the other. Um, if so, everyone would be doing it. But I guess you know, there's a lot of. It's very rare to see some extremely high squatters do high bar because low bar is generally a more powerful movement, and you don't have to go as deep for regulation. It's just all around more powerful movement. High bar sucks. I don't like high bar. But my, my back is healing up. Um, so now we're moving into front squats. What we're doing differently in front squats is because if you know that my, my wrist has some issues. So I was going to go back to this, but I thought it'd be a good kind of teach you guys a technique that I used a long time ago that I never really showed on camera. And it is a basically a no, no hand supported front squat. So what you're going to be doing is putting your arms directly out. And what this is going to do is really work on your balance. If you're learning the front squat, this is an excellent technique that not a lot of people use or show. And it will kind of force you to use a lot of your core, especially if you go to the heavier after you kind of warmed up and you still do it like I'm doing. Um, it's going to work a lot of your core because you have to stay perfectly upright so that bar doesn't roll on your shoulders or, or tempt to like cross your arms. So it's a great way to learn the front squat, great way to find the center of gravity, it's a great way to work on your balance, and especially it's a great way to find the bar positioning to make sure that the bar is going to stay there. So what you can do originally to even practice that is you can balance on your thing, on your uh, on your collar, okay? <laughs> that area. And you can just stand up, you can unrack the weight and just stand there. And do it until it's completely balanced. And then it's then you have to practice kind of walking out because then you have to balance. And then when you go to do the movements, especially when you get into the little heavier weight, I'll be working up to 225 pounds. It really is gonna focus on your core because you have to focus on staying upright, balancing, keeping your body completely straight. It is an excellent way to kind of learn and relearn the front squat. Um, so yeah, try it out if you haven't. If you're new to front squats, it's a great movement. Also, it's great just kind of a core exercise because again, you will feel it so much. It's pretty much like doing crunches. <laughs> So there's a perfect example where I wasn't focusing on my balance and wasn't keeping my arms up and it fell. It's a great example of how not to do it. Oh. Man, look how wide this lens is. Oh. Whoa! Uh, I had a great workout. Now I'm gonna head home. We gotta do a whole bunch of stuff. It is looking like I have a watch on, but I don't. Um, it's about 8.30 and I have to pack, I have to 
pack, edit this video up, upload the video for Saturday, upload this video for Monday, do some shirt orders, eat, shower, <laughs> check out my social media, do a periscope. Um, really, really, I'm actually excited to take a vacation. I don't, I'm not someone who takes a lot of vacations, um, mainly, especially in 2015. Um, kind of what I told myself, I use all my vacation days, my, my PTO for, um, for networking for YouTube. So, luckily I don't take any vacation days off for the beach trip. I can just, you know, since we have a vacation. But, um, I pretty much am dedicating all of 2015 to networking and doing super cool things. And speaking of super cool things, um, I'm not going to tell you what it is, but... In the middle of next month, so in the middle of June, I am going to do something very, very cool that I haven't told really anyone about. Um, it's gonna be a very cool experience, gonna be a cool video. Um, something that I've never done before, it's a cool, super cool opportunity that was uh, presented to me and I'm very excited to do it and take you guys along with it. But expect that in the middle to end of next month. It's gonna be pretty cool. Okay. Headed him. Goodbye. Thanks for watching.